The Magic Mike Show. Where you hear the experts speak. The Magic Mike Show. Tune into the show every week. The Magic Mike Show. You can trust the show is the bomb because it's being brought to you by RacingDudes.com. What's up, everybody? I'm Magic. And I'm Mike. And this is the Magic Mike Show, episode 538, Mr. Samich. Uh, I guess it's a derby prep. Huzzah! Sorry about the... Uh, not used to doing this an hour early. I'm, I'm very unprepared for the, the start there. Yo, thank you for joining us. Happy Monday. Happy April Fool's Day to everybody. Uh, one of the dumbest holidays I think ever created. But hey, we're here to try and uh, make sense of the senseless. Everything that happened from this past week. And I think actually the derby picture is getting clear. And with one derby prep weekend still to go, getting a better idea of how I want to play this. I just still don't know who my top pick is. Do you? No. Um, I like three horses now, which is nice. Uh, I'm glad that I have some horses on the like list. Uh, it, for me, it's chasing freedom forever young and fe- uh, fierceness. I, I like fierceness for me. The time to bet him was on Friday and I missed that bet. Like we, I, we talked about it before on Thursday show. Like if you like fierceness in the Derby, you can get 11 to one, 10 to one in some places. And I didn't bet it. And now he's going to be two to one. If he makes the gate three to one somewhere in that range. And so, it's one of those situations where I, the chance to bet him was most likely Friday. And if you missed it, not sure if you really want to have get him in the Derby because you don't know if he's going to be able to go back-to-back races or not. Uh, we haven't seen him be able to do it yet, so that's a big question. But, well, I mean, we'll talk about the Florida Derby, but that was a darn impressive race. It was. And we're going to talk all about the Florida Derby, the Arkansas Derby, and the UAE Derby. I uh, see some Forever Young talk, see some Fierceness No Shot talk. Uh, listen, I think one thing we can agree on, whether you like fierceness for the Kentucky Derby or hate them, that was by far the most impressive uh, we have seen from any horse in this crop so far. Really the most impressive effort since the Breeders' Cup Juvenile also won by fierceness. So uh, very, very, very impressive what he did on Saturday. The live reaction I had, some people were asking if we were pissed off about it or butthurt about it i was just sitting there trying to process it that was my process face of like i had a bad feeling this would happen meaning fierceness comes out goes to the lead and just goes gate to wire and dominates and i was mad at myself for not having bet a little bit of on uh, money on him to do that but yeah it happens i, it, I think the question really is is what trip are we going to see from fierceness i mean you've you've talked about how fierceness needs the lead and and in the three races he's won two of them have been gate to wire fashion the other one he was sitting right off a a horse that was never going to win the race um in the breeders cup juvenile and was able to just roll by and and win pretty easily in the stretch i will see what happens here if he tries to go to the lead in the derby who else tries to go to the lead i mean look timberlake we're gonna talk about timberlake as well most likely going to the derby no chance at winning it. And we'll get into that in a second here. Uh, but definitely factor in the pace. And that that might be those type of horses, the ones that could cause fierceness some issues. The, the, the draw for fierceness, I also think, is really important here. Like, cannot, yeah, draw, I- cannot draw wide. I Like, the two hole, the, the one hole even, I understand those are terrible draws. He's the type of horse that can just go and get out of it. Um, <laughs> but, man, if he's 15, 16, that, that is a death sentence for fierceness in the Derby. I agree. We'll talk about post-position draws being very important for two of the three winners from this past weekend, but I see the chat lighting up already. Let's get into it, buddy. Kentucky Derby Prep Talk, Riders Up! Here we go, Mike. On screen, the Florida Derby uh, mile and eighth race. We had a scratch shortened field of now, I believe, uh, nine horses were in the race. Uh, But Fierce, as you see right there in the blue and orange Rapoli colors, breaks well. I appreciated that the six, Ladon Bro, and the four, whose name are uh, Grandmo the first, that they tried pressing him to make him go three wide, and he just was too fast early and gets the crossover. And right there, as he clears everybody, I was like, "Uh, this might be over. (laughs) Yeah, it felt like it was right there. I, Hades break and, and Hades not being able to get to the front made a big difference in this race as well. I, everyone projected that Hades would be one of the benefactors of having, um, what's it? Uh, I can't remember who scratched. Something Chief scratched out of it. Seminole Chief scratched out who was going yep. to be some of the speed. And when you saw Fierceness get loose like this, you just knew everybody was el- else was in trouble because he looks so comfortable up there. And when you look at the splits in this race as well, this was a fast race. Like he, he got a 110 buyer for it. That is phenomenal. Um, but when you go see in the actual internal splits, you go 24 flat, 47 and three, 
he keeps this pace going all the way to the end where he does run a little slower at the end, but he's never even asked down the stretch either. So you don't know what was left in the tank here. And and he got the perfect trip. He got everything his own way. So this was the best situation, best scenario to see the best possible effort. I, I, it answers the question of how good he is. It doesn't answer the question of how much he can face adversity. And that's going to be the big thing heading the Derby. It's why I think the gate draw is so impressive. And I, I actually thought the run from uh, Catalytic was very, mm-hmm. very good here, too. This was the horse's first time stretching out, first time going two turns after two sprint races. I, I thought he ran well to run second in this scenario behind someone like Fierceness. He's got a chance to take a huge step forward come Derby Day. Not sure he can get past Fierceness, but at least he has tactical speed and ran on in this race. God, just watching Johnny V. When, when Johnny V's on his speed, you said this Magic Mike show on Thursday, when he's on a speed horse that he can get to just relax a little bit for him. It's just, it's such a scary thing if you bet against the horse. You're like, shit, 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 shit. Yeah, and you got even money on fierceness, which is, uh, in hindsight, you're like, well, you got even money on a horse that posted a 110 buyer and crushed by 13 lengths. Like that, that's pretty good there. Uh, we don't need to see the pick five results. We don't want to talk about that here. Uh, but let's go through the field and talk about the rest of the horses first, and we'll go back to fierceness. Catalytic, you mentioned, got up for second. He was chasing fierceness the whole way and is the only horse that chased him and didn't just completely fall apart. Uh, I know he still got beat by 13 and a half lengths, but Catalytic, a, a decent effort in his first time facing Stakes Company. And then Grand Mo the first noses out Conquest Warrior. I don't know how Conquest Warrior let Grand Mo the first beat him like that, but top three finishers for sure are going to the Kentucky Derby out of this race. Hades finishes fifth. He was pretty disappointing. We wedding funeral situation, absolutely, with the Holy Bull versus here. So you were correct, Mike, not to play him. Uh, Cadillac Grandmo, the first prospects for the Derby. Do you give them any chance to even hit the board? Yes. Uh, Grandmo, the first, no. Catalytic, yes. I, the, yeah. Like if you if you watch this race and go back in the first turn, and you mentioned Catalytic really separated himself from the rest of this field. He was a clear second. But watch him on the first turn here. He, he kind of gets out, but doesn't break beautifully. The 10 crosses over on him. So immediately yeah. you get a little bit of the head rearing there. Ends up four wide as they float out here into the first turn. Mm-hmm. Never gets inside of three wide before the second turn. So granted, significant, significantly more distance than anyone else that's around there. And that includes Grandmo the first, who's on the inside here. It includes Hades, who's sitting there in fifth. Although Hades trip, we'll get to it in a second here. It includes Conquest Warrior, who saw got to the rail there at the end of the first turn after being two wide. Catalytic covered more ground. This was his first time against Stakes Company. He has an opportunity to step forward. So he's one of those where I think that's a reasonable price horse because you're going to get a big number in the Derby. It's a reasonable mm-hmm. price horse depending on the draw. Uh, obviously, draw has to be good for a horse that's sub-talent level of the, the top-tier contenders. But I was impressed with this effort. I thought it was a very, very good effort, especially, again, first-time stakes company. And then the distance between him and everybody else for third I thought was impressive as well, considering that he was four wide, three wide, um, and chasing uh, the, the favorite into the derby gate. Uh, you mentioned Hades. Brandon brings up here in the chat. Hades getting checked before the first turn ended his chances. I'll rewind it again. He is the two-horse. You see, at this point, he's not even in the race. Uh, but he's got the rail right there. But... Uh, the four horse Grandmo the first ends up beating him to the punch and right there he had to check up and now he's taking all sorts of kickback that he's never had to deal with before in his career no he hasn't and this was one of those where you know one of the reasons I wasn't a huge Hades fan was the pace of that holy bull when they went a mile 16th he went 25 50 to the half I mean that's just dawdlingly slow now he can be faster he can go 23 46 we saw that in a seven furlong allowance win breaking from the gate um I'm just not sure. He doesn't have that natural blinding speed. I mean, you saw right out of the gate there, uh, Paco was asking for him to go, and he was not Mm -hmm. being asked. He was not as naturally as fast as Grandmo the first. And and that, to me, is a huge issue um, if you you have any interest in him in the Derby because he needs to be forwardly placed. He needs to get a perfect trip. The draw was phenomenal today. He benefited from Seminole Chief scratching out as well, and he couldn't take advantage of it. Um, I was against him in this race. I, I would be against him pretty much across the board if he does end up in the Derby. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. And very much, like I said, wedding funeral, to uh, steal one of your terms there. Um, all right, uh, this long name, R.I.P. Tato, Tato, good weather. Uh, back fierceness is 16-1 to 1 in the Kentucky Derby. Now 4-1 to 1 tempted to just cash out. 
Uh, let's talk now about his derby chances because I think this is a good way to go. If you had a 16 to 1 ticket on fierceness going to the Kentucky Derby, assuming Dornak or Sierra Leone doesn't just set a, a world record for a mile and an eighth distance this weekend, I don't think we're going to see someone else emerge as a more likely favorite. So, what price will fierceness go off at? And do you recommend cashing out if you got that 16 to 1 ticket? Well, uh, if you're being offered four to one to cash out, that's pretty tempting. Um, I, I think that he'll be three to one on Derby Day. I, my guess, even if even if Sierra Leone wins, I think he's three to one. I, this this performance teamed up with the Breeders' Cup Juvenile performance, and let's let's be honest, like we have blasted the Breeders' Cup Juvenile in the past for being a bad race. It's almost a key race at this point, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because fierceness, the winner of that, came back and won the Florida Derby. Guess who ran second? Muth. We'll talk about him in a minute here. He might have won yeah. a huge stakes race. Sierra Leone, uh, who else was in there? Timberlake. I mean, it was actually a yeah. very, very good race when you look back at it now. And so, um, man, I mean, even like even Locked, who's run okay, I guess, back. Like, but it's it that race has become a key race, and we have not seen that in years, years. So we'll see what happens moving forward. But yeah, I, I think fierceness ends up as your three to one favorite. I think he is a deserving favorite because there are two races I can point to that most likely win the Derby, assuming that he gets the break and, and or gets the draw and, and gets the race he needs. But you're kind of assuming that with everybody. So to me right now, three to one um, and, and most likely a Derby favorite, irregardless of what happens moving forward, assuming no injury, no no cold, none of that jazz. Yeah, let's see. Fierceness won the juvenile. He's come back and we'll forget the the holy bully was third there, but he gets the big win here. Uh, Muth, you mentioned, was second. He won the Arkansas Derby. We'll mention him. Locked. We haven't seen him come back. He we, They kept trying to bring him back and then they finally just shut him down for a while. But Timberlake won a Kentucky Derby prep in his next start. He was fourth. Wind Me Up uh, was way back. He was actually uh, eighth in that race. Um Not Wind Me Up. The Wine Steward is who I was thinking of. He was a yeah. scratch from the Rears Cup Juvenile. He's working towards Hopefully returning very soon. I'd uh, love to see what kind of talent he brings. But you're right. The Breeders' Cup Juvenile seems to have oddly been a key race now. It's like it's either the Fairground Circuit or Breeders' Cup Juvenile that you can uh, look at right now. I'm with you on the draw. If this horse gets an inside draw, send him. Send him hard. Hopefully he breaks well. Doesn't get that domino effect of all the horses. Trying to all get over to the rail from post 20. But if he gets outside, I think he's in a ton of trouble. Different horse we'll talk about a little bit later might have a better chance. Uh, any final thoughts on the Florida Derby before we wrap this one up? Don't sleep on catalytic. That's my, that's my, th I think people are going to dismiss this. Uh, I don't think it's a great thing to dismiss. I, I think this is a legit effort from catalytic considering the trip and everyone knew fierceness coming into this catalytics, the horse I, I put in third behind conquest warrior in second. I thought there was a little more talent here. That trip was not good. And he ran way better than everybody else in this field. And we've seen Grandma the first missing the Tampa Bay Derby by a nose. There was there was uh, Conquest Warriors, a horse that people were high on going into this race, including me. Hades, it's a horse that won the Holy Bull. Like there, there's some. I'm not saying it's like a field like the best field we've seen in the three year old class, but uh, considering what Fierceness ran, the, the race Catalytic ran was very, very, very impressive. And Nick Sievers giving him mage comparisons, uh, major Kentucky Derby winner last year, lofty comparisons, but the, the progression, the steps forward, uh, you can see that happening there a little bit with him. All right, let's talk about Oaklawn Park. Now the Arkansas Derby and this race uh, produced a winner who is not eligible for the Kentucky Derby in the number seven Muth. But I thought this was just as impressive as fierceness is the buyers. There was a big discrepancy and he got a 98 buyer, but from a time form perspective, 126 for Fierceness, 122 for Muth, much more in line with uh, the two of them being together. Just steal the eight. D. Wayne Lucas has got a horse in the Kentucky Derby again. So talk to me about your thoughts on the Arkansas Derby. Uh, I was very happy with the way this race resulted because it made it, it, it gave me clarity. We always talk about it's nice when you have a horse change coasts, change tracks, change circuits, right, on the Derby prep because it gives you a better understanding of whether or not that rest of that circuit's any good. You can throw everybody out from this race. No, <laughs> the winner of the Derby is not coming from the Arkansas Derby. I don't think a single horse in this race hits the board. The one caveat I would have is all those liberal arts people don't give up because of this race. If you really like liberal <laughs> arts coming into this, the trip was atrocious. Like I, I don't, I'm not going to completely blast him. Even like here, look at how low his head is in this. He like you can tell he's not fully engaged in the race. Um, he put picks his head up around the second turn, but by then he's already done. But his his head is like the top of his head is below the noses of a lot of the horses for the majority of this race. It's just a very odd running style. It's not something you see a lot. 
It generally tells you the horse is using more energy than it needs to. Uh, you had the check on the first turn. So if you want anyone out of this race to make the board in the Kentucky Derby, to me, it's liberal arts. Everybody else, throw them all out. I don't even, I, without looking at the points, I guess I should probably do that. I'm trying to think if liberal arts is even going to be. I'd be surprised. Uh, yeah, he's 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 yeah. not going to make the Derby. He's He needs 10 defections if he wants to make the Kentucky Derby. And that's before we see this coming weekend there. Um, I thought Just Steele, it was awesome to see him get up for second. It was awesome. Like uh, like Shadi mentions, Keith Asmussen, uh, little boy ass, and then uh, he rides for the coach. He's going to be on Lemon Muffin in the Oaks. You know that she's going to go there, even though she didn't run well in the fantasy. Uh, this is great. You get Keith Asmussen. Like the first Asmussen to win a derby could theoretically be Steve's son. Like that's just the winningest trainer in horse racing history. His son gets the Kentucky Derby before he does. So a cool story. Uh, do you think that Just Steele even has a chance to to hit the board in the Kentucky Derby? You you could, I guess you could make a case to round out the super, right? Like yeah. something like that, uh, especially at a big number. Uh, the, the running style is, you know, two fills-ish, if you will. A little worse. Not, yeah. a, not as good of a horse as two fills, but it is two fills-ish where kind of likes to be forwardly placed and doesn't really stop as bad as other people. <laughs> like, I guess that's the best way to explain it. And two fills was better than that. But that's kind of what we've seen from Just Steel, where he's happy to run second, happy to run third, tries the whole way around. Those are all positives. Um, it's son to justify. So the distance shouldn't be an issue as we stretch out here. Um, but a cup below the, the, the top contenders, but not, not a horse that I'm going to completely say couldn't run fourth. But that's that to me is about as high as it can go. I was laughing because I, I didn't see this before. Juan Hernandez almost dropped the st- the trophy <laughs> in the uh, in the winner's circle at Oakland. That was <laughs> that would have been funny. Not as bad as dropping the Stanley Cup necessarily. But let's go back and watch the five liberal arts. He's got the white blaze on his nose there, uh, white silks with kind of green stripes there. He got disqualified, which I, he got disqualified from six to eight. At that point, I'm like, what? Why? Why are we even doing this? Yeah. Like, that's salt on the wound for it. But uh, notice, but, notice how yeah. high his head is at the start of this race. And then he starts like getting into trouble. He goes out a little bit here. And then watch how low he drops his head at this point. Like he'll do it right around the turn. Because right now his head's about the same height as everybody else. He gets checked up here. You can just see oh, how yeah. disinterested he becomes in racing after that check. Because see, like, yeah. look at how his head starts to drop. And then when he does make a run, it's all the way down. Like, look how low it gets there. Like, oh my just, gosh, you're right. <laughs> it's just a horse that just doesn't really want to run, and, and because of the issues in the first turn. So, at liberal arts, I do think you want to give a pass out of this race. Uh, it's just one of those where I'm not sure that that again, liberal arts not going to be in the Derby. So, grain of salt <laughs> here, right? Unless we see some crazy thing runs in Lexington, wins that, makes it in the Derby late. But a very very odd run race for liberal arts after that trouble. Look how low his head is there. It's like below the butt of the nine. It's it's you never yeah. <laughs> every other head is like up. It's it's crazy to see a horse running with their head that low. The nine horse, by the way, being Mystic Dan, who's going to make the Kentucky Derby starting gate for Kenny McPeak. Uh, he had a he had a wide trip. He didn't get the rail trip that he had to win the Southwest Stakes, but I thought that he did a good job closing from way off of it. His Brisnet late pace rating should be pretty high come Kentucky Derby time. I wouldn't mind the nine or the eight out of this race to kind of round out your super effectus. Both of them should be a price. You're definitely going to get a better price, I think, on the eight than the nine because the nine at least has a win. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't hate Mystic Dan. Yeah, here's my problem with that nine. Like, the trip was perfect. The mud clearly helped the horse, right? If you look at the the numbers that we've seen this horse run in the mud versus out of the mud. Um, the rail was golden that day at Oakland. So everything just went perfectly for Mystic Dan. And the price, like, I, you're going to get double the price on just steel that you will mystic dan triple the price in the derby right and i would much i'm like and to me there's not a gap between them and if you look back i mean mystic dan lost to just steel two back when catching freedom beat just steel by two and a half lengths so i like if you take out the one outlier which is that monster run on the slop up the rail on a golden rail he's worse than just steel we've been we've, that's been proven twice now so mm-hmm. are we sure that like that's a horse you want to take that's a sh- shorter price than mystic dan yeah, that's a good point. I think you're getting a lot more value on the eight just steal there. Finally, we'll talk about it as he does it again. The two Timberlake was super keen. He just decided I'm going to split the four and the seven and try and go gate to wire on here. What happened to Timberlake and and was the the Rebel Stakes field just all trash for him to do this and then completely give up? Yeah, yeah, it was. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty easy. Oh, and by the way, it was a mile and an eighth. And I, I've told, I've, I've said how many times on this show, Timberlake doesn't want more distance. The mile and a 16th is about as far as Timberlake can go. And we saw that in the British Cup Juvenile where he kind of started to slow down toward the end. He, ha- he, he beat a bad field in the Rebel, and now he has to go a mile and an eighth. And, like, if he wanted any part of a mile and an eighth, he would have he would have ran third in this race, not fourth. And he wanted no part of it. This is, like, if he was in the Pat Day mile, I would be excited about this horse. Not the Derby, though. The Derby's a mile and a quarter. This, it, like, he is the most... I will go on like on record right now. He will be the most likely horse sub fifteen to one to finish last in the Derby because he is just going to back it up once they get going in the stretch. <laughs> well, maybe if fierceness ends up getting a bad draw and getting banged around out of this the starting gate, which we assume will happen if he gets a wide draw, he might be the one that just says f this because we've seen him say f this when things don't go his way, but. Uh, yeah, Justin was asking about the Pat Day Mile, and, and and I see, yeah, Kevin B agrees he'd crush the Pat Day Mile. It's a good spot for him. You just, you know, you try the Derby Trail with the horses that you've got that you think have a chance. And I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna blame them for wanting to go there. It is Win Star; they like to be in the big races. So yeah, why not take a shot with Timberlake? Yeah, he's he is a very good one turn mile horse one turn seven furlong horse on the right track he can get a mile and a 16th if it's two turns short finish line draws inside like but once we get to the mile and eight mile and a quarter no thanks hard pass uh jl says i'm all about timberlake and track fan of giving fierceness a time of it on the front end that's true they both do add the pace factor to counteract fierceness in his super elite speed so that Pat Day Miles, it's it can be quite a fun race. You know, I was really excited about last year's as well. It was oh shoot, who was it? It was Fort Bragg and who was oh, the Fort, other horse? He was. It was the the Sia's horse, the, the yep. uh, Shug horse, uh, General Jim. Yeah, that was a fun battle with those oh, horses. God, I had Fort Bragg <laughs> heavy in that race. That was a frustrating battle with those horses. Okay, so it wasn't as fun for you. <laughs> no, not as fun for me. <laughs> All right, final race we'll talk about. Uh, the one that was you had to wake up early for if you're on the West Coast. Forever Young, breaking from the far outside there with the maroon silks and the red and white uh, blinker cap on. He wins a UAE, sorry, wins, yeah, wins a UAE Derby. Also won the Saudi Cup. He is, Saudi Derby, sorry. He's undefeated coming into the Kentucky Derby. But this is a Japanese horse. And there are always people who will say, oh, a Japanese horse is never going to win this race. Forever Young, I thought, took a really nice step forward here. And there's something I saw specifically in him that made me think that. But first, you've been on Forever Young. What did you think about it? I thought this was a really good race. I like the fact that he didn't go to the lead. I like the fact that he sits. You know, he, he was basically four or five wide. This was he was ridden like he's the best horse in this race. We see this in the US sometimes. We're like, I'm not, no, I'm not going to the rail there. I'm not going behind those four horses. I'm just staying out here because I know I'm better than everybody else. And that uh is very much how the rider rode him. And that is to me, can be a very helpful thing in the Derby. I like the fact that there's tactical speed. This is not like Chasing Freedom or Sierra Leone who's going to come from way back in the pack. This is a horse that wants to sit mid, sit mid pack and can make a move. Not like Fierceness who needs to be forwardly placed. Like the, the tactical ability of Forever Young I think is a huge benefit for him come the Derby time. Didn't save, didn't save a lick of ground in this race and still ran away from everybody. And top two separated on everyone else. Now, you don't know how good the field was. That's the biggest knock on this. But I thought this is pretty much everything you could ask for from Forever Young, who, you know, did exactly what you wanted from him. If you like this horse going into this race, you yeah, maybe if he wins by 10, you like it even more. But this was a, a solid effort. A little goofy in the stretch here. Didn't switch leads right away. But uh, I didn't think that was a big issue. The, you just nailed it. Why I what I was looking for from this horse. And I saw it. he never changed his leads once in the Saudi Derby. And it drove me crazy because I thought he could have won by a few lengths over Bookham Daniel if he'd done that. But right just inside the uh, quarter pole, he should change it now. But yep. he's just a couple of jumps afterwards. He changes the leads. And you don't really see that. I mean, the jockey's riding him hard with his hand quite a bit. But he's not really, you know, he's not going to the whip super hard. He's in, I think he's going to use his fair allotment of it. But the horse has already got, nope, he's only used it uh, three, four times there. Four so, times, yeah. And he pulls away. My biggest concern with Forever Young is kind of what we talked about with Fierceness. Fierceness needs that inside draw. I get the feeling, and, and hat tip to Michael Olson for scouting this out as well. He needs to be wide. If he draws like post one, two, three, four, five, I think he's in a world of hurt. I think he hates kickback and doesn't like being inside horses. And I think that 
is ultimately what would be his undoing in the Kentucky Derby. So post draw just as crucial for him as it is for fierceness. Yeah. Um, I agree and disagree with that. I mean, I, no one wants to be one through four unless you have like fierceness. It's funny because fierceness can handle one through four and forever young probably couldn't handle 16 through 20. Like he, he I, I would want forever young in the middle and, and the price is going to be interesting on this, Kevin. I mean, like I, I bet a future bet on forever young, so I'm not going to have a win bet on Derby day. Assuming he's there, I'm going to have a much better price. We'll see what it ends up at. Um, I, I'm not sure what he goes off at. I think he goes off as a second favorite, depending on what Sierra Leone does. Uh, catching freedom also going to be in that conversation. But to me, I, like I think the hype is going to be there. If and Sierra Leone, I think is your second choice if he wins. If, if he wins his next race out, he'll go off at let's call it nine to two, right? It's three to one, nine to two, something like that. And then mm -hmm. it'll be forever young and catching freedom, who are in that six to eight to one range for me. If you're you're looking for what the, the projected derby odds will be. Um Man, it, it's not great to hear a trainer saying he doesn't like kickback, though, if we're going in the derby, because you're going to get some <laughs> kickback in the derby. Yeah, and it's going to be, again, if you get that outside draw, I'm suddenly not nearly as worried about it because he's shown with his running style, right, that he will run wide and still get the job done. Uh, Kevin B brings up for every young already has more hype now than Derma had derby week. Yes. But I think that's also fair because Forever Young is undefeated. He went to he's won in Japan. He went to Saudi and won. He went to Maidan and won. Like he is traveling all over the world and winning. Derma was third in the Saudi Derby. He was not close to winning the Saudi Derby. So he, you know, improved his stock for that gate run gate to wire win in the UAE Derby last year. But uh, yeah, I I love him. I love what I saw. I want. I'm with you in the camp of like, it's a qu question of when, not if Japan wins the Derby. I just don't know with the more I watch this, I, I like what I see. I don't love what I see. And if I had a future ticket on him at a much higher price, like you did, I'm like, this was great. He's in the yeah. Kentucky Derby. Let's go. Yeah. And I, to me, part of the, like the interest in forever young is the disinterest in Sierra Leone and Timberlake and door knock and track phantom and like a bunch of these horses that are going to be in the gate that I literally would not even consider putting in my top four um and so that that kind of changes your interest in other horses because if you have 10 horses that are going to be in the derby gate that you don't want any part of you've only got 10 horses to choose from that you like at that point uh, and that that kind of moves forever young up in a lot of cases because look this this isn't as good of a class as what we've had in some other years this is not like last year's class wasn't overly talented either in the derby this year's class is worse than last year's, um, and and we'll see what fierceness brings. Uh, but to me, like I don't have for a Derby specifically, because like Sierra Leone, I think is a good horse. I man, that is not an athletic horse. It's a big horse who can't be stopped, who needs to close. That's a problem in the Derby. There's a lot of tap at trice vibes with me with uh, with Sierra Leone. <laughs> so we'll we'll see what happens moving forward with them. But like it's it's not horses I necessarily dislike overall. It's just horses I dislike considering what you'd have to do in the Derby. Nick Seaver is saying, I'll, I'll fade the UAE Derby forever. Uh, when you grew up watching Mendelssohn and Thundering Snow and all those horses, I, I understand. But it's a yeah. different it's a different era because th those weren't Japanese horses. It's quite, quite different. Um, I wonder what they'll do shipping-wise because Curtis Manlin brings, if you're asking him to ship around the world and run a mile and a quarter again in a month's time, I want. I know that they now have to be on the grounds a week before the Kentucky Derby. I wonder if they would ship him earlier. I would hope that they do. It seems to let the horse kind of get acclimated a little bit. But also, I know that the trainer is a world-class trainer, and whatever he wants to do is probably the best decision uh, overall. Um, all right, let's look at the Kentucky Derby leaderboard. Also should mention that the horse that finished second, the number one Autobahn, technically not eligible for the Kentucky Derby because he's a Southern Hemisphere-born horse. And Paul Withrow, Free Beers, taught me this. Uh, he's four years old. He's technically a four-year-old in this race by American uh, racing calendar standards. So he's not eligible for the Kentucky Derby. Takes the second place points. So technically, Forever Young has beaten older horses on his way to the Kentucky Derby. Mike, did you know? Look that? at that! Another, another, another notch in his belt, baby. Let's go. <laughs> All right, here's your Kentucky Derby leaderboard. I'll go through it. Fierceness atop, uh, catching freedom. Forever Young is in the gate. Endlessly is interesting. There's a rumor that they might actually now consider running on the dirt for the Kentucky Derby, which did. No, don't do no. it. You're going to ruin the horse trying dirt with him. Don't try that. Uh, Timberlake fifth. He's in. We don't love him. Track Phantom is in. 
we love the pace that he brings. Uh, West Saratoga, an interesting one. Son of Exaggerator is in this. Just Steel is in at eight. Our boy, Honor Marie, is sitting there in ninth. Doorknock, we get to see this weekend in 10th. Domestic Products here. Leon is going to, we'll see him this weekend. Catalytic and Deterministic, we'll see in the Wood Memorial. Mystic Dan, we just saw No More Time. Do you think they'll go to the Derby with No More Time? I would expect so. Is there not I, I don't see connection? why they wouldn't. Yeah, I don't see why they wouldn't, considering the connections. It's an Iowa bread. Like, how many chances do you have if, if you're these connections <laughs> to get one in? At least when you don't have uh, Kelly Von Hemel as your as your trainer there. Uh, Grand Mo the first is on the verge of possibly falling out here, depending on what happens this weekend. Common Defense, 18th. Hades, the last one in from the Americans at 19th. And then T.O. Password is going to come in from Japan. I don't know much about him other than he won the Fukurio stakes. And it's you have to be very careful as an American saying that, uh, or else you get in a lot of trouble on YouTube for singing it the wrong way. But you look at the horses that are behind him. We'll see Stronghold this weekend in the San Anita Derby. We'll see El Grande O in the Wood Memorial. Uh, we'll Let's see, Pandagate just ran. Ladombro just ran. Tuscan Gold, probably a Preakness horse, the way things are going and points-wise. He's We don't expect him to have another race. Just a touch. Bluegrass stakes for him, not the Wood Memorial, which I thought was an interesting, interesting move for Brad Cox, uh, where he'll face off against Encino, another Brad Cox trainee there. Uncle Heavy, we'll see him in the Wood Memorial liberal arts we just saw so kentucky derby leaderboard we're starting to get a clearer picture of things but as far as the horses who are not in the gate yet who do you think is most likely to jump up here and make the kentucky derby gate uh man i don't know um scroll down for me a little bit try to think if i actually like any of these horses like ones i want to be in there i guess just a touch is likely i think he probably has a shot it's good score, in more, more points um I know. I'm so happy about this. This is such an easy year for, for <laughs> Manu. Uh, it's so good to see Manu back for the yeah. podcast. As she says, there's not a single horse name that even Samich can butcher in this year's field. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's beautiful. I guess uh, uh, Encino is the one that everyone oh, else wants. We'll see Encino run this weekend. I think that's uh, that's an interesting one who could get some points. I'm trying to figure out a name that I could butcher here. I just can't find any. I could go, oh, go. How about Pandagate? Can I call the horse Pandagate? That is his name, is Pandagate. Oh, I thought it was Panagate. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing here for me. I think it's deterministic weird. is a little tongue tie but it's not a yeah. traditional. Honestly, it would be. Uh, it would be. Uh, what catalytic? Catalytic. That would be the one. There you go. Because, you know, <laughs> Great example. Yeah. Yeah. But outside of that, I, I don't see any any names that are just going to be overly butchered butchered too much. Agate Road, no. a Gate Road. Yeah, it's not really you know. A lot of luck, dancing groom. Now, uh, yeah, I guess Encino is the one you want to see run this this weekend to see if he can step up and, and get points. I don't like last year. I thought there were three or four horses that were sitting in that twenty to twenty five range that could make some noise in the Derby. I don't see three or four horses sitting there this year that could make some noise in the Derby. So, uh, not not nearly as big of an issue there from who won't get in in my mind. Uh, obviously, we're probably going to have a couple defections. We almost always do heading into the Derby. So you're probably going to see some of those horses make it anyway. But we're going to see big changes uh, over this weekend. we got three major preps this weekend. So we'll see what changes here heading into heading into it. But it's, I'm happy with where we are in the Derby, at least now. I have three horses I like. I've got one horse who I think is a price could hit the board. A second horse in Honor Marie, who I, there's a price I think could hit the board. And we got to just kind of fill out how the rest is going to look. But at least we have uh, some idea of where we want to go with this. And really, that's the most important thing is we're no longer sitting here scratching our heads going, golly, what, yeah. what do we do now? This horse won. This horse won. Well, the other uh, the other nice part is that the horses that were like, we don't like them at all. We were right. We shouldn't have liked them. We shouldn't have liked Timberlake. We shouldn't have liked Hades. We shouldn't have liked Track Phantom. Like you, you kind of learned all of this stuff. And then the fact that your opinion was validated by the next races on the track makes you feel a lot better about that past opinion and the opinion you have moving forward versus sitting there and being like, well, why the hell did Timberlake win another one? Like, that's not supposed to happen. He's not supposed to do that. Do I need to change my opinion on it? It's nice to have the 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 kind of just that that validation, the consensus of the track performance to back up those opinions you had going into the races. Well, one of the happiest days of the year, at least of the first half of the year, is upon us this Friday. It's opening day at Keeneland. Mike, we got the Great One Ashland Stakes. We've got the Transylvania Stakes for three-year-old fillies on turf. The Lafayette Stakes for three-year-old boys who can't cut it going two turns on the Derby Trail. So they show up going seven furlongs there. This is a very exciting time. Very happy about Keeneland coming out. You can see already there's 10 races on Friday. 
Uh, we will get the draws. I believe we get the draws for Saturday tomorrow, either Tuesday or Wednesday. We'll have the draws for that. But you know, over at racingnews.com, we will have full coverage of everything Keeneland for the entire meet. I'm sure you're going to be covering those on the Summer Bombs as well because some of your biggest hits ever have been at Keeneland, Mike. Yeah, second ever, biggest hit ever, 15, 15, 14,600 and something. Uh, came off a $148 ticket, $160 ticket at Keeneland a couple years ago. So hopefully we can get uh, get another big one home. And that was one of the beautiful Keeneland AEs, baby. We had an AE, we went two deep, that won at 32 to one. Um, and that was the first race. And then we were all in the last race. We actually were live to, to a $2 ticket as well because we were short in that first race too. So just missed a huge score there, but still uh, nice to get uh, get... A five-figure score home at Keeneland. I think we took thirty-three uh, yeah. percent of the pool down that day, if I remember correctly. Yeah, you, you we, we yeah, made like you just bomb just tickets made up nine of the twenty-one tickets that hit. I believe it was. <laughs> I still remember that was uh, very, very amazing. Just seeing that, I was like, "Holy cow!" I've never heard of somebody doing that before. Kevin B brings up Charlie Appleby bringing a bunch over again is nice. He's got musical act with Frankie De Tori named to ride in the Transylvania. I misspoke. The Transylvania is for the males. Uh, the females were at the three old Phillies run on, I think, Saturday, Saturday or Sunday. But we also have our boy First World War. He's back. We can see we can get another five fantasy points if he can win this. This is a tough field. You've got Tennessee in here for Brad Cox, who was uh, ended up skipping running on the synthetic at Turfway Park so that they could come here and run on the turf at Keeneland. That tells me they think highly of him. Can Group is in here. Uh, Full Nelson is in here. Sheree DeVoe's got depiction. I mean, Lord Bowling Don comes in. Like, there's a lot of really nice horses in this race. First World War by a pole. Let's go. <laughs> uh, I thought you were going to bring up Oscar's World. You got the deadly combo of Sayas and Lynch, and that's without even looking. That's got to be an Oscar performance. Oh, horse, yeah. right? Oscar performance been a phenomenal sire, too. Really good sire. Actually, better dirt sire than I expected so far in his career. Well, go head over to racenews.com. We'll have free picks for every race at Keeneland all meet long, as well as every other track that's running. I know that Evangeline Downs is opening now. We've got Hawthorne just started back up. But yes, I'm excited about Hawthorne because I like the small tracks. I do tend to do pretty well playing those. So Hawthorne is back. You can go check that out over at racingdudes.com. We also have premium picks. So if you want to exact a trifecta multi-race wagering, it's all covered over there every race, every track, every day. You can also get the Sama Bombs there for Mike Samich. If you want more Mike Samich, the Elite Eight has been passed. We're now heading down to the final four teams. Mike, what do you make of what's going on in the college basketball world? Well, look, UConn's a truck. I mean, they're so good. <laughs> they haven't, they haven't, no one's been within 13 points of them for 10 straight NCAA tournament games. They lost three players to the NBA last year. Like what they're doing is, is just absolutely phenomenal. I do think there's a chance they lose both these games. Um, Bama is a just, they're going to chuck up 43 pointers, 53 pointers, and that's, that's their way of winning the game. If they get hot, they could just outscore them. Uh, UConn's really efficient on defense, though. They play really slow. I already played the under 161.5 in that game. I do think that one goes under because I don't think Bama shoots 40% from three. And I think UConn plays pretty slow, and the combination of those two should send that game under. Uh, NC State, Purdue should be interesting because you've got uh, just a huge, huge man facing a a very tall man who's big. And so it's going to be interesting to see if <laughs> if uh, if Edie will be able to move uh, NC State center out of the way and what will happen there. I, I lean toward NC State, especially catching the points. I think the nine is way too much in that spot, so we'll see what happens there. I mean, that that means that they would have been a two-and-a-half, three-point favorite over Duke, which I don't agree with either. So for me, uh, I, I would take NC State in the points, and I'd take the under right now in the UConn game. Uh, but, yeah, we'll be, we'll be live Thursday uh, on the Lombardi line, 1030 Pacific, 130 Eastern, Friday, 2, e 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern on Sharp Money, and then the handle uh, 9 a.m. noon Eastern, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Zach Eady, the Purdue center is he's scary looking like he, his, like he just has a scowl. That's intimidating. He's seven, four, 300 pounds. I mean, I mean this in the nicest way possible. He looks like the zombie boss from a video game. Yeah. Like, like that, uh -huh. that, you know what I mean? Like that's the, yeah. With the, it's he's just, the final boss. <laughs> yeah. He kind of looks like a final zombie boss. I'm just, you know, and, and he, but he's a big man and it's funny watching that game. Like they had no idea how to officiate him. At one point he had drawn 10 fouls against Tennessee and had zero fouls himself. And it's like, okay, that's a little egregious with that, that level of difference, but we'll see what happens with NC state here. They have someone who can just back him up. Like he, Edie will not be able to back his way in and just turn around and lay it up. He'll have to be able to make some post moves. It's going to be all about whether or not NC state gets in foul trouble. 
Uh, oh, that's right. It's also, uh, speaking of Elite Eight, the NCAA women's game, it's LSU versus uh, Iowa. See Caitlin Clark in action. That's always always fun to watch that. Do you have a field at all for a feel at all for the Elite Eight field in the women's side? No, I don't. I don't watch women's college basketball very much. I will watch tonight. I can't. I think this is going to be a phenomenal basketball game. Um, this is a, a rematch of the national title last year. LSU is the three seed in the, the region. Iowa is the one seed. This is to go to the final four. The two teams generally, gen, generally, genuinely do not like each other. Like they, this is there is real bad blood between the two of them. Uh, uh, Reese and Clark don't like mm-hmm. each other. They they respect each other. They don't like each other on the basketball court. They openly talk trash to each other during the national title game last year. I would expect you see it again tonight. Uh, I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun to watch the basketball game. But yeah, I don't I don't know enough to to kind of about women's basketball game to recommend a side here. But it's going to be a blast. Yeah, I for, I forgot about it. That Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark were. It's kind they're, of like uh, it, you know what it's like is when. You're, we're both big hockey fans. It's like you've got that guy for me. It's Brady Kachuk, where you're just like, or Brad Marchand, where he's like, God, I hate this guy with a passion. And then trade deadline comes around and he's on your team and you're trying to make a push for the playoffs. And you're like, thank God you're on my team because yep. otherwise I'd hate your guts. I, I don't respect Brad Marchand, but like, you know, most of these enforcer types, you're like, all right, I respect you and I hate that. Chris Chelios, when he came to the Red Wings, was a great example because we Detroit hated him for a decade from Chicago and Montreal. It's like he's on Detroit. All right, he's our guy now because now we're <laughs> now we're winning. I mean, it's this, this like I'm not gonna. It, this reminds me of like the Colorado Detroit series back in the '90s, where mm. the two teams knew each other, disliked each other, but respected each other. That that's the same style of matchup. These two teams know each other. They know they don't like each other. They respect the game, but they know that they don't like them. They they want to win, and it's it's a meaningful game. And that that you put all that together, you're going to get a good good sporting event. Well, if you want more good sporting events, watch Mike over on the VSIN Network, or come back here at YouTube.com/slash Racing Dude. Subscribe to the channel because we'll have previews for all three Kentucky Derby prep races coming out this week. We'll also have some more videos from Aaron coming out a little bit later than usual today, and then we'll be back for the Magic Mike Show on Thursday at five Eastern, two Pacific, covering Keeneland Saturday late pick five. It's going to be a real banger, and we don't even know the card yet. We just know it's Keeneland. It's going to be, be good. Banger, so. It's going to be gonna good. It's going to be good. Follow us on Twitter. I'm at Curtis Kellard. He's at Summer Bomb 18, number one, number eight. Corporate overlords at racing underscore dudes. Again, head over to racingnews.com for free picks for every race, every track, every day, including Keelan. All meet long until Thursday when we're back to preview Saturday's late pick five. I'm Magic. And I'm Mike. Good luck this week. The Magic Mike Show. Where you hear the experts speak. The Magic Mike Show. Tune into the show every week. The Magic Mike Show. You can trust the show is the bomb because it's being brought to you by racingdudes.com.